Hi folks, Sirdar here. Here's a problem you're probably familiar with. You need to make desktop apps, but you hate the bloat and the footprint of projects like Electron. Well, in this episode of Dev with Sirdar, I'm going to take a look at Tori, a framework for writing desktop applications using a web UI in Rust with a much smaller footprint than Electron. So I'm betting at one time or another, most of you watching this have tried to write a platform native application of some kind, and it's pretty easy if it's a command line application. But if it's anything with a GUI, it's much harder. And it's many times harder if you want that app to work cross-platform. This is why frameworks like Electron exist. You write your app as a web app with an HTML, CSS, JavaScript front end, and you deploy it by essentially packaging it with a web browser. Popular apps like Microsoft Visual Studio Code, for instance, are built this way. Now, there's a big upside to this approach. It's much easier to deploy these apps cross-platform because the web experience is a lot more consistent between platforms than most UI toolkits. The downside, it makes for a very large executable package. So for smaller programs, it's overkill. Now, over the last few years, we've come to expect operating systems to ship with some kind of native web view component. And Tori's approach is, instead of bundling an entire browser, we'll just use whatever that native web view is for this particular platform. So this makes for a much smaller binary package. It's a few megabytes instead of potentially hundreds of megabytes. And as with Electron, you can build your front end with whatever web components you like. You can use vanilla HTML, or you can use frameworks like Next.js or Svelte. So what I'm going to do here in this demo is give you a quick example of Tori in action using a plain vanilla HTML and JavaScript front end. This is a somewhat modified version of a demo found in Tori's documentation, and I've linked to that directly in the video description. So when you set up the Tori crate, it gives you command line tooling that you can use to deploy some pre-generated scaffolding for a Tori application. So in this directory, I've already created this scaffolding, which creates this code tree and creates a JSON file, which has basic configurations for the app, like its name and its window title. All of this could be hand edited if you want to. Now for this example, I've already created the web assets that are gonna be used in this project and they're stored in the UI directory. This is our application's homepage. It just has a little HTML and JavaScript logic into it, and we'll go into this in detail shortly. But I've also made some modifications to the main module of the Rust code for our project. We've added a function there named render greeting, which we will invoke from the JavaScript side of our code. What Tori does is it lets us write JS and Rust functions that can talk to each other, so we can pass data back and forth freely between the Rust and JavaScript sides of our application. Here's how this works. So let's go back to the HTML and, and JavaScript for the app. And the first thing that we do in this JavaScript block is set up the command that we're going to use to talk to the Rust side of things, which is called invoke. And with invoke, we pass along the name of a function on the Rust side that we want to call, plus whatever arguments we want to have passed with it. And that returns a JavaScript promise, which we can then await. And we set this particular function up on an event listener for a button that's on our page. When we click that button, we trigger this function, and the contents of a particular text field on the page are getting passed back into the render greeting function in Rust. And that will give us back a formatted string, which we can then use to modify some text on the web page. So let's build all of this and see what happens. The first time you build any app in Rust, it does take a while because any, any dependent crates have to be compiled. But subsequent builds are going to get much faster because we only have to rebuild the app itself and not its dependencies most of the time. So now here we have our application window. And up there at the top, we see, welcome to Tori. Now if I type my name in the text field and hit the button, what happens is the text in the box is passed back to the Rust side of our program in that function that I showed earlier. It's formatted and then returned to the JavaScript side where it's inserted into the page. So this is a highly simplified example, but the idea should be clear. We have two-way communication between the front end and the back end of our application. We can write our back end in Rust as we see fit, and we can pair it with any JavaScript or HTML and CSS we want on the front end. And also, this whole thing has a much smaller footprint because we're not bundling WebView components with our application. We're using whatever WebView components are already available on the platform. Tori also provides us with a lot of other little developer conveniences. Like for instance, let's say I want to make changes to the application front end, but I don't want to go through the whole recompilation process. Well, what Tori does is it watches the, the front end components of your application for changes. 
And if it senses changes, it automatically reloads the front end without having to recompile the back end. So let's say I want to change this default message to something else. So I make those changes and I save the HTML file. And when this happens, the application is automatically reloaded, but it's not recompiled on the Rust side from scratch. Only the front end, the HTML, is reloaded. The Rust backend stays exactly as is. So this helps speed up the development process. Another thing Tori lets us do is build deployable artifacts for our applications, like an MSI installable package for Windows. So if we go to the command line and we issue the command cargo Tori build, and we wait a bit, we will get back an MSI which is only a couple of megabytes in size. The exe that's packed into it and any of the attendant resource files aren't much larger than that for this particular example. And we can take this MSI and we can install it on any Windows machine just as we would any other MSI deployed application. I should note that in the case of Windows and MSIs, you will need to have the Microsoft Visual Studio build tools to accomplish this particular part, but those you can obtain for free. So to sum up, if you're interested in creating cross-platform apps using Rust and you want to give web UIs a try, or you already do, take a look at Tori. It may also serve as a nice introduction to Rust if you haven't already started working with it. And that's it for this episode. If you liked it, leave a comment below. And don't forget to follow Dev with Sardar and InfoWorld generally on Facebook, YouTube, and InfoWorld.com. <laughs>